Hello everyone and welcome to my talk on major incident management from a NOC perspective where I'll look to walk you through my career working in NOX and highlight the differences in the handling of major incidents within two major industries. Before I start I must say what a pleasure it is to be talking to you all today and um, thank you to Adam and the team at MIM for inviting me to present. So my name is Thomas Munson, I work for Box. Uh, we are powering the way the world works together through our cloud content management platform. I'm going to talk a bit more about Box and my current role shortly, but first I'd just like to go back to the turn of the century and take you on a bit of a journey uh, through my involvement in incident management. My NOC career started in September 2000, where as a school leaver, I joined BT Cellnet as an advanced modern apprentice within their network management centre, or NMC as you may know it. As well as providing industry relevant qualifications, the structure of the apprenticeship exposed us to all areas of the business for a series of uh, rotate, rotating placements. I'm sure there are many of you watching who are familiar with the role the NMC or the NOC plays within a business, but as a high level description, the primary function is to respond to signals indicating potential customer impacting events and then remediate the cause of the event accordingly. When we smell smoke, we look for fire. When we can't smell smoke, we look for fire risks. Now there's a significance to me highlighting this. As an engineer presented with a fault or an issue, in the absence of customer awareness, I would more than likely just bash, start bashing away with troubleshooting, with resets, with rollbacks, just focused on the impact, impacted system and not, imp not the impact to the customer. And this is exactly what I did early on in my career. Within the first couple of months, I was presented with a comprehensive list of commands by one of my trainers. Standing out like a big red button saying, do not press was a command that would restart the BSE. The 16 year old me couldn't resist. So I executed the command, restarting a base site controller, which controlled a series of mobile cell sites serving a large area within Greater London. It caused a few minutes of downtime and it was just before lunchtime. Rather, well, rather surprisingly, rather, <laughs> I wasn't sacked, uh, but I did have my access level revoked for a, a number of months. In that moment, I had no context of the impact to the customer. The only context, context I had was that I had just successfully restarted my first BSC. So now just quickly returning to the departmental rotation within my apprenticeship, and maybe coming later than it should have uh, been for a young Tom, I was given the opportunity to attend a series of rotations with our customer service departments in Leeds. I received some basic customer care training before finally listening to some, into some calls and then being allowed to field calls myself, obviously with close supervision. For me, at this formative stage of my career, this experience was vital. Being able to hear firsthand the impact one cell site out of service has on a whole community was powerful enough. But one caller really stuck with me. This caller was a parent whose child had sadly recently passed away. They had called in distraught at not being able to access their voicemail. As this meant that they had lost access to a voice message from their child shortly before they died. It was their last communication before their death. Devastatingly, the nature of what had occurred to the technology meant we were unable to re retrieve that voicemail. Through this experience, I be began to see the impact of downtime and was able to build empathy for the customer that was previously far removed from me and my list of commands. Fast forward to 2009, where I was now a radio access network engineer in the Service Performance Management Center, which was the rebranded NMC. In the intervening years, alongside BT Cellnet becoming O2, I had been through several management and IC roles that had really focused my craft around troubleshooting and was proactively providing leadership within my team through technical advice and coaching. I would also take a keen interest in major service outages, seeing them as a great opportunity to hone in my troubleshooting ability, as well as a chance to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, with chaos and with pressure. It's like taking a penalty in a football match. You can take 100 penalties in training, but nothing will recreate the pressure that you will feel within a match setting. The same is true in instant response. There is nothing like that can recreate the stress and the pressure 
other than jumping in and grasping the opportunity. And having been through the process of building my empathy for the customer early on, I was keen to get involved as much as possible. So when the SPMC duty manager role was offered to me in 2015, it seemed a perfect match to where I was at, where I was at with my skill level, my experience and my aspiration to take more ownership. The day-to-day -day was general operational management around resourcing, coaching, reporting and process improvement. A critical function, however, was providing a technical presence during major service outages. Now, O2 is owned by the Spanish telecoms giant Telefonica. Making use of the rich history and experience of their parent owners, O2 has a solid structure and process and a set of processes that are well tested to best support customers using the O2 network. As of November 2019, that figure stood at 34 million customers that were using the O2 infrastructure. So O2 service management department is vast and the major incident management function is well resourced with professionals with good experience of incident management. The incident management flow was usually triggered by SPMC duty managers such as myself, whereby we would engage the MIM on call, or the MIM on duty rather, as soon as we detected smoke in the network. The MIM would then start to invoke the major incident process, drafting comms for our technical eyes, and ready to send once we had confirmed there was indeed fire. Should a major service outage be called, the MIM would lead the bridge alongside functional technical leads, with the SPMC duty manager providing the current customer impact, considering what our network monitoring was telling us alongside our social media tracking system. The MIM were responsible for the full life cycle of the MSO, from the initial comms through to the communication of the post instant review, including the internal and external communications. Now, as a disclaimer, I experienced some interesting scenarios whilst at O2, but the heat map shown on the graphical is does not reflect a real life uh, incident. Although they are now a very effective team, O2 went through a long evolution to get to the point of employing a strategy of incident management that utilised major incident management framework. When I first joined BT Cellnet, instants were led by network controllers or netcons. This team was made up of engineers who were strong generalists and had a good knack of understanding how to lead. To quote the great film Love, Honor and Obey, they were both feared and revered. NMC engineers aspired to emulate the netcons, whereas functional leads would not enjoy their interactions as the netcons were experts at not accepting mediocrity. As the technology of mobile networks advanced, O2 adapted to become more of a service provider than a mobile operator. Instant management needed to adapt as well, meaning the netcons were rebranded to service controllers or servcons. By this point, many of the netcons had either retired or had moved on to other roles and were backfilled with individuals from a service management background. ITIL fundamentals became more defined in our process in order to better support the increase in the number of services we provi provided. The final transition to major incident management uh, managers, MIMS, uh, came about as the services provided by O2 became fundamental to the success of the company. The MIM team was much larger than the service control team, taking into account the complexity of the operation they were supporting. They didn't necessarily need to be technically aware they just needed to keep investigations moving forward and ensure the governance of processes. After just, eight, uh, just over 18 years with O2, having gone from being an apprentice through to managing the team where I'd spent my formative years, I had the opportunity in early 2019 to join Box.com, building out and leading a NOP function in their Old Street office in London, which would enable the 24-7 monitoring of Box infrastructure for the first time in their 14 year history. The chance to test myself in a different industry in an emerging market, as well as further my management experience as a, was a huge driver for me to make the leap. But after my first three days of onboarding, I remember calling my wife from San Francisco and telling her I'd made a mistake. I was out of my depth. As she has a knack of doing, my wife brought me back to center by reminding me I had just left behind a, a career full of familiarity and comfort. And what I was feeling was normal. She told me 
She didn't advise me, but she told me to speak to my manager about my concerns, which I duly did on day four. After having a little chuckle to himself, he informed me that they didn't hire me for my knowledge of mobile telecoms. But why would they have? This was a SaaS environment after all. They hired me because of my experience, my ability to lead a team in a knock environment, and also to coach the engineers through the incident management mindset. Although Box is an American company based in the Valley over in San Francisco, we have over 100,000 plus customers globally. And we have offices in locations such as New York, Tokyo, Sydney, and London to meet their needs locally. I lead a team, uh, two teams out of our London base on Old Street Roundabout, although like many of you, we are currently all working remotely. One of my teams is responsible for remediating infrastructure vulnerabilities through ensuring firmware is up to date through patching activities. And my other team is made up of four highly skilled engineers providing, high, uh, providing site reliability in the NOC setting. The day-to-day -day activities are largely monitor and alert based, but also heavily supplemented with producing solutions to problems through DevOps-like project delivery, eliminating the toil. A large majority of the Box engineering community are based in the US, so my team are effectively protecting Box during the engineering off hours. The way we approach instant handling differs to the other shifts in our NOC as a result of this. We have the same responsibility of considering impact versus severity, but we also need to evaluate the risk of reduced productivity caused by engaging on-call engineers. In other words, if we are necessarily engaging on-call, that engineer will then be unavailable for the next working day, impacting productivity. So there is added impetus for my team to have a deeper understanding of the infrastructure in order to firstly make the right call, but also to apply mitigation steps where they can as much as possible. However, should an incident arise, Fox operates a different incident process than I was used to at O2. A key component to our process is our instant commanders, our ICs, a role that one of the knock engineers will assume during times of incident. During a site issue, they are the ones driving the investigation. They are experts in instant process and network architecture. Much like the netcon and the MIM qualities I referred to earlier, they have the technical experience that allows them to understand most scenarios which is vital in directing investigations and managing various service owners and subject matter experts. They also understand the process deeply as well, which helps them as well in the same context. Their technical understanding also allows them to update the business on the impact of the customers, allowing for appropriate response. As is largely the case in most instant processes, the key outcomes of any incident is minimal amount of downtime and clarity around the issue. Our ICs achieve this through not only orchestrating the subject matter experts, but also through support from their NOC shift partners who provide custom impact statements, communication management, swim lane allocation, to name but a few of their responsibilities. Following the remediation of an incident, NOC managers like myself lead the post-incident review where we focus on the lessons learned from a NOC perspective. At Box, we then make use of a cohort of licensed coroners who perform a full post-mortem on the incident, providing company-wide lessons learned as well as the root cause analysis. Now at Box, we are very con conscious that we are asking our knock engineers to play a multitude of roles during their working day. To help provide clarity to the role and to assist in their making of judgment calls, we have a mission statement and a supporting set of values. Our mission is a strong statement. We are here to protect the customer experience, always. If our engineers are conflicted as to whether to carry out a task, they ask themselves if the task supports our mission statement. Is what I'm doing in the best interest of the customer? Is it helping to protect the customer experience? Now, as far as values go, Box has a set of well-established values that really reflect the culture. A couple of good examples that are very relevant to protecting the site are make them proud and be an owner. But for our environment, whereby the engineers are 24 by seven, but the, engine, uh, the but managers that support them are only Monday to Friday, the more specific not values provide extra guidance in times where maybe you're on your own as an engineer, 
or clarity is hard to find. The knock engineers we hire are assertive and aggressive. They trust, but they also verify. They are hungry to learn and grow and are not happy sitting still. Nevertheless, nevertheless they are still human and can suffer from self-doubt. Having values that remind them to be the authority on the customer experience reminds them that they should not rely on our customers to tell us our site isn't working. We are their advocate. Maybe an engineer has had a shift full of shenanigans, so being reminded that it's one team box helps to focus on setting the team up for success by building strong relationships and being a good partner. So I just want to start to wrap up this talk. Uh, my first objective for today was to give you all a perspective of how the instant process is handled differently in a mobile telecoms and a SaaS organization. At O2, they have a major instant management model with MIMS who are experts in process. At Box, our instant commanders drive instants with their in-depth knowledge of our complex architecture, with their ability to lead during chaos with a calm presence of mind. Our knock engineers at Box closely support the IC during instance, proactively providing essential information. At O2, the duty manager would provide this information to the incident bridge, but would have a network of engineers all working hard to provide various information streams to their duty manager. The PIRs at O2 are led by the MIMS, whereas at Box, the post-mortem process is owned by the licensed coroners. The second objective I had for this talk was to give you an overview into the role the NOC plays in the instant process. As discussed, there is some overlap within the function of a traditional role, but the overriding objectives for a NOC during major instance, regardless of the industry, are the minimal amount of downtime for our customers and clarity around what has happened during the incident. When not in times of incident, our focus is on putting measures in place to ensure we continuously achieve these objectives. As a final post-presentation review, I would just like to give you all an action item. Be the authority on the customer experience. This is the value we drill into our NUC engineers the most. I'm assuming that most of you watching this talk are in roles where protecting the customer experience is of paramount importance. Make sure you own that responsibility. Be the authority on the customer experience. We need to know when something is broken. We shouldn't be waiting for our customers to tell us that because then it is already too late. Be the authority on the customer experience. Our customers need advocates that protect their experience. Find the empathy that will allow you to be the advocate and ultimately the authority on the customer experience. So lastly, I'd just like to thank you all for your time. Uh, that's the end of today's talk. It's been a pleasure and an honor to share my experience with you. If you would like to carry on the conversation or have any other questions or any questions at all, sorry, feel, please feel free to contact me via email, thomasmonson at box.com or by reaching out through my LinkedIn profile which is just Thomas Dash Watson. Thank you all and have a great day.